Success with no-till organic soybeans. Getting that good weed-free stand. Produced by University of Georgia Extension, North Carolina Extension, and the United States Agricultural Research Service in Tifton, Georgia and Beltsville, Maryland. With funding by Southern Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education Program. Demand for organic soybeans is increasing. Organic dairies and poultry producers use soybeans as feed and are looking for sources of organic grain in the southeast. That said, consistent good yields are hard to achieve as weeds are particularly challenging to control in organic soybean production. Organic soybeans are usually planted into plowed fields and receive numerous cultivations for weed control. In total, 12 to 15 field operations, including plowing, disking, cultipacking, planting, blind cultivation, and between row cultivation are necessary for crop and weed management. The high number of passes across the field increases fossil fuel use and can deplete soil organic matter. If conditions are wet and the farmer cannot get into the field, all of these operations are delayed and weeds can quickly get ahead of the soybean crop. We're here to talk about the organic no-till soybean system. Our growers have been very interested in this system for a number of years now because of the problems they have with conventional clean-till organic soybeans. When we have wet springs, we get behind on our cultivation routine and weeds can be a real problem in clean-till soybeans. This system that we're seeing behind us right here, we have a rye cover crop. We grow it up until it's about the soft dough stage. We roll it down. We plant soybeans straight into it. When we follow that system, we actually find the exact opposite. It's the wet years in which this system really thrives. We hope that this system is going to provide more stability, both in terms of yield and weed management for the growers, and it's going to ease their logistics in the spring. Another advantage to the system is that we're able to reduce our tillage, which is a big problem in organics. We're very tillage dependent, so we have concerns over soil quality. We're doing a lot of other things on organic farms to help with soil quality. We're cover cropping, we're using manures, but when we're constantly tilling the system, we can, out, we can still have soil health concerns. But what this system does is we're changing when that tillage occurs. Instead of doing intensive tillage in the spring, we're now doing nothing in the spring and we're doing our tillage in the fall. Now that adds some several big advantages from a soil health concern and from soil erosion. One is that when we plant a cover crop in the fall, we're gonna plant that with a uh, drill. And so if we plant with a drill, we can attain quick canopy coverage and protect the soil. Contrast that with what we do when we're doing wide row soybeans or corn. There, we're gonna start tilling February, March to get ready to plant in April or May. Uh, by the time we're done with our cultivations and we're starting to close canopy, we can be months out from when we began tillage to when we actually have complete coverage of the soil. So if we can shift all of that and put all of that tillage in the fall, we have a big gain that we can make there in terms of soil erosion. Continuous no-till is not really an option for organic producers, but we do need to be working to reduce the amount of tillage. Cover crop-based no-till soybeans is one approach to reducing tillage in organic grain production. This approach can be successful by using the following practices. One, start with high levels of cereal rye mulch. Two, use a planter and make sure it is set up to work in high residue conditions to get good seed to soil contact when planting through the mulch. Three, use high soybean seeding rates to ensure a fast growing cash crop that closes the canopy quickly to choke out weeds. Four, use varieties with good early vigor. Successful no-till soybeans require high levels of mature cereal rye cover crop that has been rolled down to form a thick mulch. How much? Try to target 8,000 pounds of cereal rye biomass per acre. Although 8,000 pounds of cereal rye biomass per acre may seem intimidating, this amount will control the weeds for about six weeks, allowing the soybeans to develop ahead of the weeds. If you're lucky enough to have low weed pressure and aggressive soybean growth rates, you can be successful at rye residue amounts between 6,000 and 8,000 pounds per acre. Rye. Why? High biomass levels of cereal rye mulches work well for no-till soybeans because they inhibit weeds from establishing while living, and when terminated with a roller crimper, they suppress weeds by lowering temperatures and minimizing light at the soil surface. Many weeds, like pigweed, are stimulated to germinate by short flashes of sunlight. 
a thick biomass residue on the surface of the ground reduces the light reaching the soil surface. This delays weed seeds from germinating, which reduces weed pressure as the soybeans are getting established. If you use cereal rye to accumulate no-till biomass, you can enjoy an added advantage. As the cereal rye dies and begins to decompose, it releases chemicals that inhibit weed seedling emergence. This effect is called allelopathy. How much rye do you need? Research shows that the amount of weeds decrease as the amount of residue increases. You might be more comfortable trying to plant into smaller amounts, but 8,000 pounds per acre is the standard measure for good weed control. So what does this look like, and how will you know if you have enough rye residue? The first field only has about 4,000 pounds per acre of rye. It will not provide good weed control. The second field is close. It has about 6,000 pounds per acre, but we would like to see even more rye. The third field has the right amount of rye. It has about 8,000 pounds per acre. Cultivate and manage your rye cover crops as you would cash crops. This includes carefully planning your timing, using the best planning method, and paying close attention to your soil fertility. Planting your rye. Use two bushels of seed with a good germination rate and no noxious weed seeds. The two bushel rate will help ensure a good, thick stand. You'll get the best results if the rye seed is drilled rather than broadcast. Planting date is a critical factor driving cereal rye biomass because the more tillers formed in the fall will result in greater overall biomass in the spring. Cereal rye needs to be planted by mid-September in the mountains, by the end of September in the Piedmont, and by Halloween in the coastal plain. It's best if you can plant to rotate this crop phase into fields with good soil fertility or apply fertilizer to get a good stand. Some growers apply poultry litter in the late winter to ensure good growth. Generally, 20 to 30 pounds nitrogen per acre is enough to promote the kind of growth you'll need. Timing is an important consideration when terminating your cover crop. The amount of biomass you'll achieve depends on it. Without the option of spraying herbicide and organic production, killing a cereal rye cover crop requires waiting until it is at the right growth stage. Timing is critical. If you roll and crimp your rye too soon, your cover crop will spring right back up, or you'll have regrowth as an added concern. You'll know it's the right time to roll and crimp when the rye is well into flowering. At a minimum, make sure that 50% of the tillers in the field are well into flowering. Pay close attention to whether most of the inflorescence is covered in anthers. For added benefit, you can wait until the milk or dough stage. Waiting until this stage can increase your overall biomass production by an additional 1,000 to 2,000 pounds per acre. Here's an example of the milk stage. See how the beginning seed seems to have a milky fluid when you break it with your fingernail? Rye that is rolled and crimped at the proper growth stage remains matted down on the soil surface and forms a thick mulch, which is what you want. Crimp, don't cut. A word of warning. Crimp, don't cut. Crimping signals rye in the reproductive stage to cease and desist. What's more, crimped stalks break down much slower than cut stalks, encouraging weed control for a longer amount of time. Also, crimped rye laid in one direction makes it easier to plant. There are a variety of commercial roller crimpers available. Many of these use a chevron pattern to reduce vibration. Some farmers have even made their own by welding angle iron to old cultipackers. These have to be used at low speeds since they tend to vibrate heavily. We've looked at rolling and crimping. Now let's see how best to plant through heavy residue mulch. The key to getting a good stand is getting good seed soil contact when you're planting into the cover. There are a number of approaches to this and we'll look at equipment specifically in a minute. Here are a couple of basics. You can either roll, crimp, and plant in one pass, or roll, crimp, and then plant. Some growers also roll, crimp, and then roll, crimp, and plant with a delay between the first rolling and second rolling. If you use several operations, be sure to plant the same direction you roll, crimp. This helps to prevent hairpinning and blowouts. For the rye to provide weed control, try your best not to disturb or displace the heavy mulch. Remember, the heavy, flat mat of rolled and crimped rye is critical to maintaining weed control. After you plant, 
it should be difficult to see where the rows are. If you see wide strips of soil, this just creates an opportunity for weeds to emerge. Let's take a closer look at some equipment that works. There are many variations to this and you may set things up differently on your farm depending on what kind of equipment you already have. First, you'll need a cutting coulter out in front of the shank if you use one, or in front of the double disc openers. You want this coulter to be running on firm ground so it can cut through the rye. In the coastal plain, most farmers use a shank to break up the plow pan that naturally forms in these sandy soils over the winter. The cutting coulter should be mounted at least a foot in front of the shank so it runs on firm ground. In our research, smooth cutting coulters have worked well. We've also liked using these coulters with the plastic press wheels on either side. These wheels help hold the residue down so the coulter can slice through. Yetter sharp tooth row cleaners can also be used to cut through the residue. These are best unit mounted in front of the coulter. Again, the idea is to cut the residue so the double disc opener can get down to the soil without leaving a lot of soil exposed. It can be helpful to wait until the morning dew has dried before you plant so the dry residue can be cut more easily. You can use a fluted coulter before the double disc opener if row cleaners are also used to clear residue out of the way. This will help move residue out of the way without opening a wide slit. Finally, you need to think about your closing wheels. Solid cast iron wheels work well on some soils. Others require curved tine closers or a combo of curved tine and solid steel closing wheels. What you use will depend on your soil and the moisture conditions. And remember, it's always a good idea to make a pass and then check for the right planting depth and good soil contact. Then you can make any adjustments needed. Soybean seeding rate is important for obtaining good stands. Because organic soybeans don't have synthetic fungicide or other seed treatments, you'll need to expect some losses. Most successful growers use higher seeding rates to help compensate. The recommended seeding rates are 200,000 seeds per acre, or even as high as 225,000 per acre if possible. Row spacing. Row spacing is an effective strategy for increasing the competitiveness of the cash crop. Use splitters and plant on 15-inch centers to decrease the time it takes to achieve crop canopy closure. However, if you have high weed seed banks and a lot of perennial weed pressure, narrower row spacings may provide more opportunities for weeds to emerge. Unfortunately, this will eliminate the option for high residue cultivation as a rescue practice. For best results, select seed varieties that germinate and grow quickly. Early vigor seed varieties have the potential to grow faster than weeds, quickly closing the canopy and discouraging weed germination. Check with your local extension agent to find seed varieties that grow quickly in your area. No-till organic soybeans can be successful with good yields in addition to the benefits for the soil of using a cover crop and reducing tillage. Now that we've covered the key aspects of developing a successful no-till soybean production system, let's review the keys to success. Treat your rye cover crop as a weed control program. This includes planting on time, drill, don't broadcast, two bushels per acre of good seed, fertilize with 30 pounds of nitrogen per acre in late winter, roll and crimp at the milk to soft dough stage. Next, Ensure good seed soil contact by using sharp cutting cultures, using row cleaners if necessary, testing planting depth, using the right closing wheels, select the right seeding rate and varieties, use a higher seeding rate of 200,000 seeds per acre or even as high as 225,000 per acre, use varieties proven for your area with early vigor, now that we've discussed how to best grow no-till soybeans, be sure to visit the North Carolina Organic Grain Project at the address listed on the screen. For additional questions specific to your area, contact your local extension office. Find your local extension office by using the address listed on the screen.